Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Capitola City Council. Uh, I also want to welcome everyone who may be watching uh, from home this evening. 
Um, we will begin this meeting um, first with a roll call, Sue. Councilmember Harlan? Here. Councilmember Norton? Here. Councilmember Vautor? Here. Councilmember Termini? Here. Mayor Story? Here. And I'm going to ask uh, Councilmember uh, Vautor to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, I'll ask uh, our city attorney, John Barrisoni, to give us a report on closed session. Thank you, Mayor Story. Uh, the council only had two items for discussion in closed session uh, this evening. The first was uh, consideration of uh, directing the city manager to enter into uh, negotiation, negotiations for, uh, uh, with Moss Beach Associates for just some preliminary uh, consideration of redevelopment of the um, city hall uh, property. Um, the council uh, did authorize the uh, city manager to enter into those negotiations, um, but took no reportable action in closed session, nor did they take any action with regard to the conceptual um, <coughs> development that will be the subject of those um, negotiations. Secondly, uh, the council discussed one potential case of uh, where the city faces significant exposure to litigation uh, concerning the Monarch Cove development application and also uh, initiation of litigation concerning uh, the Monarch Cove's uh, con conditional use permit. Uh, the council heard from the city's uh, planning director, city manager, and city attorney with regard to those matters, but took no reportable action in closed session. And that's the end of my oral report. Thank you, John. The next item on the agenda is uh, the identification of additional materials. Uh, the council uh, has received uh, at our dais here one email from uh, the, a representative from Construction Industry Force Account Council, um, and this is related to an, the uh, item 8A concerning the McGregor Park project report of construction bids. We'll probably speak more to that um, email when we get to that agenda item. Uh, next, we'll move on to additions and deletions to the agenda. Does staff have any additions or deletions? Can I just supplement my um, oral report on closed session sure. with one point? Uh, the mayor, uh, Sam Story, disqualified himself from participation of the Monarch Cove item and was not present during that discussion. All right. Thank you, John. Uh, next, I'll repeat uh, whether the staff has any additions or deletions to the agenda. Seeing none, council members. Was there any items that were at this point going to be reported? I have something at, uh, for oral communications. Okay. It would not, <coughs> nothing for this evening's agenda. Okay, nothing to add or remove from tonight's agenda. No. Um, hearing none, uh, the agenda will uh, proceed as published. Um, the next item is public comments. This is opportunity for members of the public to address the City Council on items that are not on tonight's agenda. If you um, have something you'd like to uh, tell the City Council, please step up. Good evening. My name is Adam Samuels. I live on El Salto Drive. Uh, thank you, council members, for everything you're doing. Thanks for the support over the 4th of July. I think it really was uh, a productive and positive event for all of us in the neighborhood and, and hopefully for people who are able to attend as well. And I think their cooperation did happen thanks to your support. Um, I want to just speak for a couple minutes about the conditional use permit a little bit in general, but a little in specific. You know, I've been educating myself through this process of how does a conditional use permit work? And my understanding is, you know, if we go back to 10 or 11 or 12 or 13 years ago, there was a specific conditional use permit put together for the Monarch Code with an idea of there would be points that would be expected to be complied with for the permit to be valid. Um, but one of the things I've discovered that's been just really interesting is when it comes to monitoring and enforcing a conditional use permit, 
the how it gets monitored and by who, and the how it gets enforced and by who, is kind of less specific than, than one might imagine. Um, some of you may be aware that there was an incident over the past couple of weeks where the police was called because there was a concern that the permit was not being um, met, met with. And it became clear that it wasn't, it wasn't, no one knew whose role it was to actually monitor or potentially enforce. And conversations I've had with some city staff, basically what, what I was told is who's ultimately <coughs> responsible for enforcing the conditional use permit is the city council. So I don't know if that means we should call you if something's happening. I don't think so. I, I think there's a, a balance <coughs> and an understanding that the community would really appreciate in terms of what would be the right direction that we can take so that if there's something that comes up as an issue of concern or an issue that potentially would lead to a hearing or a review of the permit, that we understand the right process and that we also ensure that people are taken care of during that process because the incident that happened, I think some people were not taken care of uh, to the standard of any anyone in the city or anyone in the community would expect. Um, that's really the extent of the comment. And you know, my request is sooner rather than later that the city look at initiating a review of this conditional use permit specifically for the Monaco game. Mr. Mayor, you want to tell them that we're working on it? Um, I think it may be better if somebody else responded. Oh, I'll be on, happy to. Okay. We're working on it. We have gotten emails and calls and, and uh, you know, call, um, visits and things. And we need to do a better job of enforcing what's going on up there. And we're going to work a little harder to do that for the remainder of the summer to create a better situation for you up there. We have worked with the operators not very successfully. They've been still having some problems. And so we're going we're gonna to work a little harder. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, if I yes, could, and yes, Adam, if you could contact me, I, I know if you were good enough to organize a meeting for myself, for residents up there, I'd like to do that one more time. Absolutely. <laughs> That'd be great. Thank you. That'd be great. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Adam. Does anyone else wish to uh, speak to the City Council this evening? Claire Burnham, and I also live on Depot Hill. Um, my I I'm doing a follow-up to what Adam was asking. So could you speak in the microphone, please? Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, who do we call if there's a problem? Or will you let us know? Is that the answer? Like if, uh, if uh, a problem uh, is perceived there, what, sure. what as residents of the neighborhood, how right. do we proceed? And, and not speaking um, concerning uh, the particular uh, project on Depot Hill, but I think any time a resident as a problem or issue, you are free to call your uh, elected representatives, council members here, uh, if you should have one. Um, and of course, you are free to contact uh, the city staff uh, by email or phone uh, to raise your concern. And you're free to do both if you feel that you're not getting the response uh, or, or responsiveness. Uh, that you feel you're entitled to. So just uh, in general terms, uh, you know, I, I view that that's part of our job and task here are to hear the residents' complaints um, and to process them in the appropriate way. And also to call the non-emergency number and report it, whether it's a tree being cut down illegally or building that's occurring illegally on a weekend without permits or demolition or you know, any illegal activity that you, that you see. One, one person called one day because there was a lamb in the backyard on, over on Riverview. And so we dispatched animal control over there who had, you know, took a very nice picture of this lamb. And then um, he said he was just keeping it for a while to take it to his friend's house in the afternoon. But they get all kinds of things and hopefully they, um, they, they will respond to that and take care of the problem. Thank you. I don't know if I've used up my three minutes, but I do have a, another issue. And that is, um, I live on the corner of Central and El Salto. And I rejoiced when I read that uh, free parking was being given to the Junior Guard program. And I want to thank all of you. Whoever was responsible for that, I want to thank you so much. Um, because parking all during the summer has been really difficult, especially Central, Escalona, El Salto, and even onto Saxon. Um, Unfortunately, there's still about 50 junior guard participants still parking on Central. Um, 
I was wondering if there could be like an email just to go out to the participants and say, please, you know, it's hard on neighborhoods when you park there. It impacts it. In other words, we've gotten to the point where if you go out on an errand, you can't come back and park anywhere near your house. So anyway, just a, a plea from that part of the hill. Do you have, on, have on-site parking? I'm sorry? Do you have on-site parking? Do you have a driveway? No. Okay. No. And a lot of us don't, you know, so I'm afraid that's typical. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. Right. Maybe I'll ask uh, if Jamie if uh, the Parks and Rec could maybe get out some sort of communique, um, you know, really letting the junior guard parents know, um, you know, where they can access free parking um, and to utilize it. Okay. I'll do that. All right. Thank you. Um, is, is there anyone else that would like to address the council this evening during public comments on items not on the agenda? Okay, seeing none, I'm going to close this portion of our meeting uh, and we'll move ahead to uh, City Council, City Treasurer, and staff comments. Let's begin with staff comments. Are there any? Yes, Chief. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Just wanted to remind everyone that this Sunday is the Wharf to Wharf race. There will be significant closures and detours around town. We will be sitting out a uh, Nix alert to everybody, reminding them of that. That will be posted on our web as well. And uh, it will be closed down in the village to about 1230, I believe, I, some between 1230 and 1. Uh, and there's about 16,000 runners, and so it'll be quite busy this weekend, and there'll be alternate routes, so please be patient, please be considerate to everybody, and we'll get through another successful event, hopefully. Right. Thank you. Question. Yes, Debbie. Isn't that more than we've allowed in, the pa in past years, and why is it higher? It's actually the same amount. They're uh, trying to eliminate the amount of uh, bandit runners. These are the amount of registered runners. So they're changing the format of it at the start to try and reduce the amount of unregistered runners. But it used to be 14,000, wasn't it, or 12,000? Well, 14,000 14, runners and then a, few, a couple <coughs> thousand spectators. But uh, true, having worked the wharf to wharf finish line for many years, um, there's another several thousand that don't have any bibs on. And that's, that's what makes it problematic. Does that number work out okay, or should we have the number lower to accommodate for all the, the other people? That what they're doing is they're altering the start time so not everybody is trying to run at once based on what you feel your time frame is on how fast you're going to run. So the slower runners, such as myself, would be in the back, and the more professional runners would be at the front. You're running, Chief. No, I am not. Oh, I was going to watch for you. I'm participating. <laughs> okay. You're participating. I believe it sold out in 19 hours, and I think it was 15,000 is what they try to limit to. So, give or take. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, any other staff comments? Next, we'll move to uh, treasurer comments. No comment. Yeah. Okay. Council members. Yes, Mike. First, uh, apologies for missing the last meeting. I pined away all Thursday <laughs> night while on vacation, not being here. Uh, but I, uh, I have a, a desire to discuss a little further the issue of TOT, and because of the, the timing with regard to uh, getting on the ballot, I'd like to propose a special meeting for next Thursday night just to discuss the, uh, the TOT issue on the ballot. It would, wouldn't be a very long meeting, but I think it's um, important enough for the entire council to weigh in on. I'll second that motion. Time? Um, we could do six, if that works for everyone. Five thirty, or uh, what, whatever's good. Six. Whatever. I, I'll leave it up to st I'll leave it up to the mayor and staff to set the time. Okay. But I'm I'm not locked. Why into don't the we time. Um, maybe consider this direction to staff to schedule a special meeting? Okay. Or okay. I don't. I don't it's not agenda, so I don't. I don't know that we can. Well, make, we can't discuss it now. It, That's why I wanted to get the special meeting, and then we can. Right. That'll be the only thing on the agenda, effectively. Right. I suppose. Okay. We we may ask to continue another item, then uh, we'll get we'll get there later. Okay. Right. Let's, think, say, let's say for six o'clock. I think that that's just set the time now. I'd prefer five thirty, but six o'clock is a more traditional starting time, I think, for us. Well, sure. it's five thirty. I mean, if if well, is I, everyone I available? I'd go along five thirty if everyone else would. Uh, it's good for me. Either time. Either. Good. Okay. Let's say 5.30 then. 5.30. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You're welcome. Uh, Dennis? Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd like to uh, suggest that we direct staff to um, to uh, come back with us with a report on the uh, the possibility of a three hour um, uh, parking limit in the village change from the two hours or some discourse as to um, parking hour regulations in the village. Why don't we do it at the end of the summer when we see how the summer went and how the numbers <coughs> look and how the meetings <coughs> look and all the revenue and because we've had some little glitches and bumps in well, the road I'm, in that. I'm anticipating that it'll take that long before we, it'll be in the summer before we even get staff to come back, probably a month or so, huh? Yeah, I think it'll be September at it'll this be September, point. So the end of September would be yeah. better. We have people we have, we have people packed here through September with yeah. all the festivals. We should look at it in October. Well, it, it, it takes a while to change it, too. And, and my issue really is, is that it's really unfair to a visitor who comes here that wants to go to a restaurant and go shop afterwards because it's going to take you an hour and a half to go through a restaurant and you have a half hour to shop and that's why we're giving out so many tickets and how many I mean disillusioned shoppers do we have in the village because of that it doesn't change our revenue it doesn't change anything besides it makes the parking officers jobs much easier and it gives opportunity for the the stores to share some of the wealth of, of people visiting the visiting the village so I, I, I don't really you know, I'm not real set on one month from now, but um, I think that, that if we discuss it now, we wouldn't be able to enact it for three or four months if we did it anyway, so. And is there some, any new support for it? Because last time there wasn't, there, I think we turned it down because there wasn't very much support for it. Well, every person I talk to is, uh, that okay. the visits to this village would like to do that, but I, I, don't, I don't know mm -hmm. where the merchants are in this. Well, would this go through the Parking and Traffic um, Commission? They've, they've already addressed it once, <coughs> and there was, okay. a, there was apparently a split vote in that. So I, if you want to do it to them, fine, but uh, so f they have discussed it in the past, and so. Their next meeting is in September, if we wanted some input from them. Okay. Uh, it's, yeah, it seemed like, I, I, yeah, I don't recall when, you know, they had discussed it. I think if, it, if it's maybe, has been a while since they've, Maybe we should bring it up to them again. Good evening, Council. No, they've actually discussed it. I don't remember the exact date, but in uh, earlier this year or late 2013, they oh recently they did make okay. a recommendation. It was based on when we were thinking we were having some cooperation with the Coastal Commission, be able to make some changes to our parking program. They initiated that discussion because that was one of the things on the current. So we do have a current recommendation okay. from them. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Disregard my comments. Uh, so, staff, do you have the direction you need to bring yes. that forward and, and in the right timing? So when is it going to come to us? Well, let's, let's yeah, I, I mean, we're not ready to bring it in August, so I haven't finalized the schedules in September or October <coughs> at this point. Obviously, there's going to be competing needs to put on the agenda, so it sounds like the council would like to talk about it at some point, and we'll have to agendize it as we have availability as we get into September, October, and I'll work with the mayor on that. Okay. October, is that better? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I could give us more information. I mean, it was just brought up not long ago when we turned it down. So what, you know, mm -hmm. what's, what's changed? So, but but it, it'll, be, it'll be good to talk about it. Okay, any other uh, council comments? SoCal um, Pioneer Picnic this Saturday, noon to 3 over at Pringle Grove in SoCal. They are our sisters and brothers. They were our neighbors in farming in the early settlements of Capitola in the 1800s and early 1900s. And when we formed the city in um, the 40, late 40s, we asked them if they wanted to form a city with us and they said no. But anyway, they have, they have a pioneer picnic and we had one of the um, speakers that was a speaker at that, at that picnic came to the museum and, does, and put his uh, design, his artwork on the t-shirts that we sold that year. Mr. Hill, Frank Hill. And so anyway, it's a great event if you uh, have, would like to come Saturday afternoon. It's just off of Main Street. And Mr. Mayor, uh, the Begonia Festival fundraiser is at the Shatterbrook a week from this Sunday. Uh, if you call the Chamber or City Hall, you can get information on how to get tickets. There's only a few left. Fun. I had a question. Um, I think all the council members actually got a copy of a letter from uh, a visitor uh, talking about our parking meters. Um, and I guess they got a ticket because they failed to push the validate button. 
Um, uh, could somebody clarify that process and are, are we getting a lot of that kind of issue or The pay stations do require you to complete a transaction and there's clearly signage on them that says you must complete the transaction to, to pay. Um, but it is more after you put your money in, you need to push the complete transaction button. Um, we do have signage on there that, that indicates that. Okay. Now, the number of violations So I just know. putting in your parking stall number is not sufficient. Right. So the process is you enter your stall number and ask you how much you want to pay at, uh, down in the village is dollar fifty an hour. Uh -huh. You enter the amount you want to pay or swipe your credit card and then you complete the transaction. Um, because what it is with a credit card payment, it won't transmit and get a credit card approval until you hit that button. So, uh, and, you know, at a single space meter, yes, you just put in the coins, but because we now accept credit cards, you have to have that. Right. If somebody's paying with cash um, and they don't hit the validate button, um, is there some way to uh, verify the parking number with the additional cash that's in that uh, meter? I, I think the process is, and I'll have to check on this, is that it will actually uh, refund the money and cancel the transaction. So um, I don't know if the cancel yeah. transaction shows up, but my understanding is that the, the money is returned at that point. When, but it, unfortunately, they give them enough time, more, you know, to, to complete it. To so complete they walk it, so away, if they walk away, they don't see the it. next person gets gets the money. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well. Maybe we could just look at the signings and make sure that it's obvious like enough so that people and and I don't know maybe this is an outlier and and no one else is having this issue yeah. but if it's coming up you know uh, frequently um, uh, I'll yeah talk maybe with we the, should yeah I'll I'll work with the chief and see if it's a right. big problem or right. not thank you Steve uh, any other council comments Ed you. Okay. Uh, seeing none, we'll close that portion of the agenda and now move on to the consent calendar. These items that are uh, approved with one vote unless an item is pulled for uh, further d uh, discussion. Is there any member of the public that would like to pull a consent calendar item? Seeing none, council members? I'll move consent. Uh, I'd like to pull the check register, please. Okay, we'll pull <coughs> the check <coughs> register. I'd like to pull D, please, <coughs> and I'll second it. Okay, C and D, and we got a second. Um, <coughs> so why don't we uh, approve the balance of the calendar, and then let's go right to C and D. Um, so all in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 The motion passes unanimously. Uh, so item C, which is approval of the city <coughs> check register, dated June 20th, June 27th, July 3rd, and July 11th, all in 2014. Oh, no, excuse um, me, Mayor, I didn't catch the second on that motion. I, Stephanie oh, okay. seconded it, yeah. Um, so, uh, Dennis, I think that's... Well, since we have item. a little time this evening and we haven't critiqued the check register in a number of years... You want to go through every single Tori item? And, yeah, I want to go through everything. Tori's here with us, so we can certainly grill her. For, keep her awake back there at the back. Okay. Um, you can grill me, too. Oh, Christine too. <laughs> um, uh, check number uh, 77671. Uh, uh, Cinemax uh, Theaters, a payment of $4,398. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. That check was a refund for a developer deposit account for the theater expansion at Kings Plaza. They haven't done it yet, though. They processed their permit through the Planning Commission, got approved, and oh, okay. so we refunded the balance of their deposit. Can I, can I ask a question? How are things going over there with the project, with the theater project? To my knowledge, they haven't started. Um, I think I was there about a week ago, and there was no mm -hmm. activity yet, and I haven't heard if they have a schedule uh, to start construction yet. They have a building permit? They do not. They, they haven't submitted their construction drawings right. yet, so there's not going to be a lot of activity yet. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I sure miss Capital Book Cafe. It was a real loss this community was angry. Um, 
Check number 77765, um, Pacific Monarch. Um, it's a travel thing for, for the Junior Guards buses for 7,800. Where did we take them? New York? <laughs> oh, competition. A lot of snacks. It's Seven thousand eight hundred dollars. Well, they keep it for several days. That's they the, what? They have to keep it for several days. Yeah, we're looking at other options. It used to be parents would drive them, right? You can't get the parent volunteers to drive them anymore, so they rented a couple of a couple of vehicles, not just one. Where did they go? Yes. Uh, Huntington Beach, I think, is where great. they have. I that. think that's great competition. I'm yeah. my favorite. Yeah. It just seems a little it's steep for buses. Yeah, it is. It's okay. in the we do budget for it. Th but that that goes that goes in the junior guards budget, right? That's from there. So they're aware that it, that's taken from their budget instead of them driving. Should we make them aware of that? They well, they know. They know that they used to have the parents do all the driving, but since that's Could they not have occurring. an email list? Actually, you know what they don't have? I think the parent guard, the parent club has an email list, but the like the email that they're suggesting to send out to the all the parent participants, uh, I don't know that it's. Uh, Contained in an email list, but it's all on, uh, you know, their registration forms because okay. they I don't register online. Okay. So I, th I think we'd probably all like to be on their list so we could get their information so we could support them. They had a, um, they had a pancake breakfast over at Jade Street oh, Park years yeah, ago, and they yeah. sold T-shirts yeah. and sweatshirts and stuff as a fundraiser, you know, and they. they um, so if they have things like that, let us know so we can yeah. support it and help. I don't know if they can. T they still do that, but I'll find out and find I, out. How the do they raise funds? funds? By selling T-shirts and the sweatshirts down at the on the day of um, registration, uh, when they open up the first day of, of guards, they sell it down there, and that's how they raise their money. But yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, this one's for Rudy. Um, seven 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 eight four. Seven thousand two hundred fifty-five dollars wireless U U.S. locale. What's the check number again, please? Okay, it's uh, 77784. To who? To the radios. It's, it's to uh, Wireless US look for, for... Oh, listening. yes, for our radios. We purchased new handheld radios. Okay. I think that's fine. It, it just <coughs> seems like, and I'm sure you need all the radios you can get, it seems like every three or four months we come up with new radios. There's, a, you know, maybe I've been on the council too long. I see that item too many, too, once a year or something, but it seems like... How many radio, different radios do you guys operate? A few years ago, there were some employees who bought their own. And so, therefore, uh, to meet with the upgrades, instead of them purchasing their own radios, we then picked up, we purchased them. Thank you, Rudy. I mm -hmm. support that. Uh, I think. Oh, okay. Um, there's, uh, this is an employee issue. Um, from Parks 77822, and it's uh, Frederick uh, Charles Boyg, uh, $7,741 for employee. What what does that gentleman do? Well, let, let me try to find that check. Right right it's on page number two of eight, page 39. Instructor. He's one of our instructors. I, I, he's a tennis instructor. A tennis instructor. Ten, yeah, that's, and he actually wor makes us quite a bit of money from his program. Yeah, and so that's like a whole semester, or what is that for, for you? Uh, it, you know, I don't know what that payment period covers. It could be over okay. two of our, our peers okay. or just one. Yeah. So how often on, on employees from in the parks program do we pay them? Do we pay them on a monthly basis, or so, do we pay them on a... So he's not an employee. Okay. He's a contractor. Yeah, but how often do they get paid, Lisa? Do they get paid... Do we pay them on a monthly mm -hmm. basis, or do they... I think it's, it's on the basis of the conclusion of the... Um, program because it's based on enrollment so we don't pay them uh, I don't believe it's monthly but I'll have to confirm that but it's all based on their number so we have to wait till we get that okay. completed mm -hmm. thank you Lisa thank you that's it mr. mayor all right thank you I'll move approval of check register second all in favor aye, aye. motion passes unanimously we'll move on to item 7d which is uh, consider approving the final report to close out the sustainable communities planning grant that's under Prop 84 for the sustainability component of the general plan update. Um, Stephanie, you pulled this item, did you? Is, is this material, it's not contained within the general plan, it's a separate document? No, the money that we received from that grant was used to produce, uh, in part, the general plan update. Say that again? 
Th that grant was used to help us produce the general plan update. Right, right, right. But I mean, the document that we received, it's in the packet tonight, is an AMBEG. Oh, that's document. correct. It's an that's AMBEG correct. document. Right. And that's not going to be part of the general plan. That's just an AMBEG document. Correct. It's a separate document. Yeah. But the, the, yeah, the, do you think we got our money's worth? Is my answer, mm -hmm. my question. $100,000. No comment. I, I, it doesn't have to really be answered either. I just, you know, we do these things and we think we're going to get some really good information and they're going to they're provide the sustainability, you know, work for the general plan and we have big ideas and big hopes and I hope we got our money. Well, I think, you know, there, there was some requirements for us to add sustainability provisions to the general plan and so by virtue of getting the grant, we're able to defray some of the city costs. So I think there is at least that benefit. Yeah, do keep in mind that was the pro you know, the primary reason why we, we brought forward this grant was to help offset costs that we were going to have to incur as part of the general plan process. So some of the hearings were covered by these costs. So obviously the document here may or may not, it wasn't our final goal to generate this document. It was to help offset some of our costs in our general plan and get sustainability really incorporated into our general plan in a robust way. Thank you very much. Thank you. Move approval. Okay. Second. Yeah, our action is just to uh, accept the final report, which is uh, part of the agenda packet. Um, so all motion in favor. Motion to approve. Yeah. yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Or motion to accept. Yeah, thank you. Thank Aye. you. Motion passes unanimously, which will bring us to the general government public hearing <coughs> portion of our meeting this evening. The first item is item A, which is to receive a report on the McGregor Park project construction bids. The recommended action is to direct staff to negotiate with the low bidder to reduce the construction costs. <coughs> Steve, you're going to lead us in this one? I'm going to start it out, yes. Um, so we did receive uh, seven bids uh, last Wednesday on the McGregor Park. There's a summary of the bids included in the report and it's breakdown is on the attachment. The low bidder was uh, Earthworks Paving, uh, who's in here in Capitola. Um, their low bid, base bid was 171,000 and change. Their total project, we, the project was bid with an option to include the skate park element or not to include the skate park element. Um, with the skate park project element, the total project was $207,000. The engineer's estimate on this project <coughs> was $135,000. Um, based on these numbers, our recommendation was to try and do some value engineering with the low bid contractor. Based on the information we all received in an email today, our recommended action today is not to take that action. Um, per the public contract code, we need to award a contract before we can enter into uh, a, a engineering value engineering phase of the project. So at this point, our um, staff's recommendation is not to give me any direction to negotiate with the low bidder. Uh, we will return at the next council meeting with an award letter based on the bids we received. Um, the second part of my rec or recommended action is um, to include the skate park element in the project at this time. That was an optional item that we were to be considering. Um, I do think I could get direction solely on that, whether we're going to award a contract that would include the skate park element or not. Um, just to give you a remind the council on why it was an optional item, um, as we were putting this project together, we had significant support for a dog park and the bike park. People were coming forward um, offering to help with that and they've followed through and we have received a significant amount of donations and assistance in putting those elements together. A skate park element um, when we were going out to bid had been relatively quiet. It has remained relatively quiet except for the Mark Monty Foundation has stepped up and we have entered into an agreement with him um, for a fireworks show in October the proceeds of which are designated for the development of the skate park up at McGregor. So staff's recommendation at this point would be to include the skate park element in the project since we have an agreement to actually complete the element. The project itself does not include any ramps or anything. It was just going to include some uh, pavement uh, from which ramps could be put on at this point um, since it looks like we're going to have funding for those ramps um, our recommendation would be to include that in this in the report um, so 
once again, we're no direction to negotiate. We can't, we will not be uh, talking with the contractor until we've awarded a bid based on the bids received. But I would like direction on the skate park at this point, if I can. Thank you. Okay, other questions? Uh, Dennis, I. Yeah, Steve, just a couple of questions. Um, we talked at one time about not paving the, the parking lot and just using a, a base rock or a DG over there. The, the paving, the asphalt bid was at 14000 Um There's a couple of things that are, I'm looking at Earthworks bid on this, and um, the drinking fountains, I don't know how they got it, but $8,000 a piece is just, not, you know, something seems a little out of line there. It must be military. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have to bring water to them, too, I would imagine. <laughs> Yeah. The effective drinking fountains. They well, had to bring plumbing we, to them, right? Do we need to have two? Could we just go by with one? That, that's the that would be the type of thing that um, yeah. once we've awarded the contract, <coughs> we, could, we have the right to eliminate items and, and change the quantity of items once we've awarded the contract. Can we leave the, you to do that? If we need to get down to a budget, can we leave that process yes. to you? Yes. Okay. Um, the solar lighting, we need lighting. There's no question about that. Um, uh, Relocation of parking lot gate. I don't quite understand that, but that I w w we're going to use the ones that are there. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, there's one parking lot gate on the okay. west entrance that we're going to move, and we're, that entrance is going away. So we're just going to relocate. That. We need we need all the fences we called for. I don't know how we get by without that. Yeah, I I concur with that, and they're much more expensive than we anticipated. Okay. <clears throat> it does have it, de it does have decomposed gr uh, granite and it has the asphalt uh, aggregate base at the top. Is that what was that a different area? So yeah, what the fourteen thousand dollar for the asphalt under <coughs> option A that is for the skate park. That's for what the skate Ad. park. Oh, the skate and that's park? why it's an, an optional item whether we're going to include that. Oh, or I not. see. Okay. The other asphalt is for the um, ADA spaces that we need to include in the parking lot and also the uh, just repairing some of the AC dike on McGregor <coughs> Drive. The parking lot itself is, is actually the aggregate base item number six there. Mm -hmm. um, we were going to put in a, a DG or not DG, a base oh, okay. rock parking lot. Okay. Okay. So, you know, I, I had concerns about this when we were auctioning off the dog park 10,000. Seems insignificant in the, in the whole picture. It probably should have been 30,000. But it's a done deal. We we're stuck with that. So I would. It, it just seems that it's kind of in your hat, your your lap now, Steve. If you can get some prices down on this thing, and, and we're, how much over budget are we? If we can, on this right now, there's um, about one hundred and forty-six thousand dollars in the budget okay. for the project. Um, you know, we're going to award a contract and then deduct some items from this uh, project as we go through. I'm pretty sure we can get, I don't know if we can get all the way down to 146, um, but that's what I'll work on and have a report for you at the next council meeting. So will you have to come back to us to increase the budget or not? Um, we need to award a contract for an amount you give me today, whether we're including the skate park amount. Um, I'll work it out with the finance director okay. um, how we need to budget that. So what we're, will we be awarding today is 207? No, we are not awarding today. We did not include that action in our agenda. So if what, what I'm asking for is to continue any consideration of awarding a contract okay. until the next council meeting. Thank Don't you. give me any direction to <coughs> negotiate with the contractor because I can't do that until we have awarded a contract. The only decision I need tonight is whether to include the skate park or not. Okay. Thank you, Steve. All right, Mike. So if I understand it correctly, the, the action tonight we will continue this item to be brought back as an award of contract, hopefully at the special meeting next week. Good opportunity. Could be, yes. And at, in the same motion, we will ask you when you bring back the award of contract to either include or not include the AC pads for the skate park, correct? Correct. After we award the contract, if we award it at the next meeting, will it come back to us with the value engineering prior to actually entering in, or are we done with it at that point? Would we not have another look? That would be at your discretion. Certainly, you could direct me to return with uh, the value engine. And the or results if, of the value well, you engine. would have to return if you went over budget. Correct. Anyway, fine. So if you can make this happen within 150,000, we don't need to see it anymore. I understand. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Any other questions, Stephanie? Just some comments whenever it's. Okay. Well, why don't we um, do our questions first? No questions. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. On the budget, Steve, the 146.5, um, does that include the Monty um, 
approximately what are minimum 25 that they are kicking in? That does not. And, and like I said, w this project's only building a pad for the ramps. Um, right. So that work that in the 25,000 or whatever it is from the Monty Foundation will pay to put the ramps on. So there are two separate items that are not, and so that's not included in here. Okay. Is there any possibility of shifting the Monty money to the pump track? I didn't negotiate that deal. I'm kind of looking. I mean, at this stage of the game, I think the pump track itself is, is funded. Um, we have the funding, correct me if I'm wrong, we have the funding necessary for the pump, tr pump track. The trick would, the, the unfunded portion is basically this infrastructure that you see in front of you tonight. Uh, that was the component, those were the components of the, of the bid project. So it's possible we could have a conversation about, you know, what we talked to the Monty Foundation about with purchasing the ramps. Um, we could talk to them about purchasing the ramps and helping with the pad, for example. And that might be something we could do to try to defray the costs. Uh, we have to see if that was a possibility. Okay. Because uh, it seemed like that would be relevant to whether or not we move ahead with uh, skate park uh, payments, right. you know, tonight. And, and I don't need an answer on the skate park tonight. If, you don't. If you're not in a position to do that, we can. I'll bring it back as an option in the next item. I, um, mm -hmm. So don't feel the pressure to answer that question. Um, okay. It seems like though that's a that would be a good uh, maybe point to have back from the Monty Foundation when we yeah. do approach this, to see if there's um, any leeway to shift the money from the skate park to other. Well, I, I know that um, they're they're um, youth focus, and so it seems like the pump track would. Well, I think real logically would be the pad for the skate park, which is included here, uh, and that would help do the same thing I think that you're what you're trying to mm -hmm. trying to do and I wanted to ask uh, about four years ago this council uh, on a split vote approved uh, a um, what about a 6,000 square foot uh, skate park at Monterey Park um, what is the status of that my understanding uh, and frankly uh, my concern is that there seems to be no interest among the skate community uh, in this skate park at McGregor that's why, I mean, not only have they not participated, not contributed, but they are actively opposing it um, and are trying to resurrect the, the approved skate park at Monterey Park. What is the status of that and what are their abilities uh, to uh, bring that forth? So, in... 2013, I believe there was a split vote on proceeding with the design of a 6,000 square foot skate park, uh, leaving the eucalyptus trees in and, and things like that. We did not, you know, issue an, a permit or anything like that for the construction of a 6,000 square foot skate park. We kind of continued the hearing. We at, at that hearing, we looked at a 9,000 square foot skate park. Um, and this council's direction was to come back with a 6,000 square foot skate park. Um, at that point, um, the funding, uh, donation funding kind of dried up. They said they weren't interested in building a small park. Uh, opposition grew amongst the neighborhood up there. The school district um, opposed the project at that point after the hearing. Um, so in, in essence, it was tabled. Um, the funding dried up, the opposition grew. Um, when we came forward with the McGregor Park, we mentioned that this would in, in essence take the place of the uh, park at, at Monterey. Um, no formal action was included to, you know, discontinue the Monterey Park site. Certainly the council could give us direction to reopen that uh, item. They do have a 6,000 square foot design that they have completed. Um, if the council would like to see that, we could certainly bring that forward at, at another public hearing. Um, but at this point, uh, staff isn't working on it. Um, the funding is only recently that they, uh, that the state, state park community that's involved in that has re-energized themselves. Okay, thank you for uh, that information. Uh, any other questions on the staff report at this time? Yes, seeing none. Yes, I'm going to open it up now to the public. Uh, 
to comment on uh, the McGregor uh, Park uh, project bids. Um, is anyone have any thoughts on it? Seeing none, I'm going to close the, the microphone on this item. I'll bring it back. And Dennis, you want you to go ahead. I'm sorry, Sam. I'm on a completely different page than you. I, there's no way that I want to go revisit Monterey Park again. Oh, no. no brutalized no, on that no, project. Yeah, Dennis, let me be clear. Yeah. Uh, I voted against that project. <laughs> I was in the minority. It was approved by a <coughs> majority of the council. My point is... Though, if we're going to invest money in a skate park at McGregor, we better make sure that the door is closed on this item. And I just, okay. I just want to make sure that the door is closed if we're proceeding uh, with McGregor. Okay. And, and that's I, it. No, I, I voted against it then. Okay. My attitude hasn't changed. Okay. So that's okay. not well, why. Thank you I for just, clarifying okay. that. Um, we've gone a long way down the path. We, we came to the realization as a council, as a community, that... The only place to put a skateboard park is away from any residential area because the opposition will rise in those areas no matter what it is. It's a cultural phenomenon. It's a, it's a noise phenomenon. It's a, it's a physical phenomenon that neighbors have a really hard time accepting that, that thing. So we came up with a place that's outside of town. We've got to give it a chance. The reason that we went to McGregor is because of skateboard park. It wasn't because of BMX, and it was not because of dog park. Those just, we f just felt that when we took it out there that we had an opportunity to put all three of them back there. The skateboard was the driving force of it. Um, you build it, they will come. We will have skateboarders out there. I'll guarantee you there will be skateboarders out there. If not, I'll learn to skateboard. No, it's, it's a, it, it's, it's, I think that we've heard a few people in the community vocal against moving it out of the middle of the community, and I understand their reasoning. There's good reasoning to their, to their things. We don't have a place in the middle of this community at this time. Maybe someday we will, um, but at this point, we have an opportunity for a, reasonable park place, for a reasonable place to put a skateboard park that's away from our residential areas, that's already partially funded, or guaranteed funded, basically, that we can put a, a small but, but uh, a skateboard park in there in multi-use with, with two other facilities. I don't think we should deviate from that plan. I think we should go full speed <coughs> and, and make this thing work. And, uh, and as, as far as put, including the skateboard park in the bids here, I think we have to. That is the intent of putting this park in there. So that's my feeling. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Right. We had gotten an email from a lady who said, look at what Watsonville did. They didn't do it right. They're doing it over again. Don't do a temporary one. Do a permanent one, blah, blah, blah. So I called a, a staff member down in Watsonville to see what, what, uh, what's going on down there. And they said, well, you know, they had that skateboard park for a long time. It's not that they were trying and it didn't work. They tried it and it worked. It was very successful. It was in the back of Ramsey Park. But they were having some problems back there, so they decided to move, not with the, not with the, uh, the skateboarders, particularly, but they wanted to make it, move it up to the street, up to Main Street, make it more visible to the public, to people walking by, driving by, riding by, et cetera. It was way back in that corner, back by the Natural History Center. So they said, no, you know, go for it. You know, I mean, it's you know real popular. And they said that um, that they would um, uh, uh, encourage us to add st what they call street features. And because they said that, um, oh, and then the email also intimated that they that they didn't do it right, and so they're doing it they're doing it over. She said, no, we did it right at the time when we did that one. That was state of the art, and that was what people wanted. That's what they did. She said, now they want different things. They want little fake hydrant, water hydrants, fire hydrants to jump over. They want little curbs. They want, you know, all kinds of those, what they call, what they're calling street features. So she said, if you can, put a few of them in there and it'll really make people happy. And she said, I know it's mostly for beginners and, you know, maybe a little intermediates, but, um, and, the, and the older kids, you know, will say, oh, well, it's not enough for us. But, you know, if you just put a few little features in there, she said, people really like that. Thank you, Stephanie. Yes. I would like to uh, move that we continue this item to be brought back at the special meeting um, and you can present the skateboard pad adult at that time. Yeah, is, is there a second? Let's see if we have a second. I'll that. second that. Uh, okay, there's a motion to second. Um, I just want to say um, since we're over budget, um, I am concerned about incurring costs for something that uh, is actively opposed. Um, 
and, and potentially, uh, maybe it will be used, maybe it's, it won't, okay? Uh, but, you know, when we're trying to scrape up the funds to try to get this uh, project completed, um, it makes it hard for me uh, to want to, you know, extend our uh, pocketbook uh, to include that item. Now, I'm going to refer judgment until we get, um, you know, maybe some hope, maybe some savings uh, in the construction costs, and let, let's see where we land next week. Um, but, uh, you know, if we're significantly over budget, I just then use the money for the pump track. Uh, or for the dog park, um, and um, and you know, and consider the skate park at a at a future date. Um, so those are my thoughts. Any further thoughts before? Yeah, yes, I just yeah. have a couple comments. It's along the same lines you just mentioned. Originally, I was opposed to this project being up there, and um, I'm still a little lukewarm to it. My main concern is the cost and 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 going over it. And, you know, our intent was to limit it to to I believe $150,000. Uh, the fact that the Monty Foundation is going to come in and contribute funds, that was, was the thing that brought me back into the loop, that someone was going to pay for the skate the portion. Um, so my concerns are, you know, if we're going to be able to get this back and reduce the cost, and I know there's some legal process we have to go through to let that, allow that happen, but it was my intent that we were doing infrastructure and all the interior improvements were going to be made by people, you know, the, the sponsors of either the skate community or someone such as Monty. So I'm still holding to that position that um, it's my intent that the Monty money is going to be used either for the pavement that's necessary or uh, the ramps that go in there. Uh, but I, I'd still like to leave the limit at what we agreed upon when we funded this project. Okay. Thank you. Um, you guys have enough to... Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, you Steve. Can vote on the continuation, Mr. Mayor? Um, yeah, is there a motion to continue this item? That's right. So, I, yes. Okay. No, second. uh, seconded by Councilmember Bator. Right. Okay. That's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Uh, the next item, item B, is to consider a re resolution pertaining to the November 4th, 2014 general municipal election. Uh, by selecting one of uh, the following recommended actions. The first recommended action is to adopt the resolution calling for a general municipal election and requesting the Santa Cruz County Elections Department to consolidate a general municipal election on Tuesday, November 4th, or adopt a res resolution calling for a general municipal election for the submission to the voters for a local ballot measure to make the office of the city treasurer appointed and requesting the Santa Cruz County Elections Department to consolidate a general municipal election on November 4, 2014. Um, so it sounds like the choice between us here tonight as to whether or not to move forward with a ballot measure to uh, convert the treasurer position to appoint from an elected to appointed position. Um, the recommended action is to um, uh, adopt uh, one of those uh, resolutions that I um, uh, just referred to. So we'll begin with the staff report. Jamie, you're going to yep. lead us in Mr. That? Mayor, thank you. Uh, I would like to modify my recommendation a little bit based on the decision this evening to schedule a special meeting next week. Um, our, our suggestion is, is that we adopt a single resolution that includes all of the city's measures on it. So what I would suggest we do is focus on the single question this evening of whether or not we want to put the treasurer on that ballot measure and defer adopting any resolution at this time. For the meeting next week, we'll have... Um, we'll have a resolution, an A or a B, that includes your direction this evening, plus an option to include a TOT. Uh, so the recommendation this evening is really just give direction on the on the treasurer item, and we'll come back next week with the appropriate resolutions for you to consider. So as the council is aware, uh, we've taken a look. The city has taken a look at whether or not the treasurer should be an elected or appointed position. Um, we've had a lot of discussions about it. We've done polling. The Finance Advisory Committee has been meeting over the last year on examining the best practices in other cities. And uh, I think our, our elected treasurer this evening has a recommendation from the Finance Advisory Committee <coughs> to deliver to you on this topic tonight. I'm going to go to the podium. Good evening, Council. Thank you. Um, I just want to first express thank you. Um, it looked as though the Finance Committee had met three different times in regards to this topic, and it looked as though you guys were going to kind of skip over without a recommendation. And so I just wanted to tell you I really appreciate you guys waiting um, to hear it th this evening. So, um, 
So after the September meeting, the City Council asked the Finance Advisory Committee to study the treasurer position and to provide a recommendation to you all. Um, my f first of all, I just want to tell you my take on it, being the appointed treasurer. Um, I have to say it's an honor to serve. I appreciate it. Um, I'm not in favor either way. I simply stepped up because I love numbers and budgets and um, because of the vacancy. So um, the dilemma we thought needed to be solved for was how do we get a treasurer um, position filled with a good quality candidate, whether it be appointment or elected? Um, the Finance Advisory Committee reviewed the surrounding areas in our state and noticed many municipalities had appointed treasurers versus elected. The city conducted a, a public opinion survey to gauge the climate on the issue. The results presented at the last meeting um, showed the overall results to be very close in that some people felt like it should be on the ballot to elect the treasurer and some people felt and it pr was pretty much even. Um, appointed versus elected. The Finance Advisory Committee met several times over the last year to review the possible options and we voted to recommend that the city not put the measure on the ballot in November. In the same motion we decided we'd like to take a larger role, play a larger role in the recruiting and vetting of the possible treasurer candidates that might be out there. So like for instance you guys do um, a meet the candidate forum night and so the Finance Advisory Committee was saying, well, maybe the candidate that's running for treasurer could come to the Finance Committee meeting and we could ask questions and then possibly kind of report back to you what we think. So that's it. Are there any questions? I have a couple of maybe they're directed more to Sue on this thing is, is what does it cost when we have this election for this, this office? I actually don't recall, but I can look it up while you're discussing it because okay. I have a record. I here. think the number just to put it on the ballot was about forty thousand. Is that right, Jamie? No, the number to put it on the ballot for our, in the course of a general municipal election is is under five thousand okay. dollars. To hold a special election was, was that, the that 40, was the forty thousand. So if it was during regular election time, it's five thousand. So it's pretty. I easy. think it's actually even less than that, but it's okay. in that ballpark. If this was an appointed position, how would that person be appointed? It would have to be appointed by the council. The Finance Advisory Committee at first, mm -hmm. our idea was maybe um, the Finance Advisory Committee would p appoint um, a treasurer. Um, maybe it's somebody who's been on the Finance Committee for a number of years and then they kind of go into the treasurer position. But it, we came at back and found out from the attorney that it has to be appointed by you all. Sue, have you ever seen an election since you've been here that, that more than one person's applied for, for the position of treasurer? No. And our bill at the last election from, from the county was about 13,000. 13,000? 2012 election. Okay. But, but that, that was solely for the council so position. So adding one other item. Add any I'm, measure. Any measure, I, I believe, adds about. I remember 3,800 bucks. I don't know why I had that number in my head, but okay, yeah. that was what I recalled. So the marginal cost of putting something on this next ballot is is somewhere around four or five thousand dollars. Okay, thank you. Jamie, do you remember the last time the position had two candidates? Was it the 90s? I want to say it was Bob 92. That was Bob Gunn in 2000. 2000. Bob Gunn and an, another candidate, and I'm sorry, I forget the name. Did you did that research, right, Sue? The number of times that we've had multiple candidates for treasurer? I remember seeing it. Um, yeah, I don't recall. It's just since I've been here, there hasn't been. I don't, okay. I don't recall. Then before that, for eight years, it, it was a single person that was Glenn Hanna. Mm -hmm. and, and that <coughs> race had two people in it, a man and a woman. Um, Glenn's, Glenn's original Not leader. Glenn's first one, was it? Yeah. Oh, then the second, Glenn's second one was unopposed. Right. Right. Okay. Are there other questions for Christine? Thank you very much Thank for you everything guys. you're doing. We, we really, it. really appreciate it because you are the group of experts that give us really good information. Thank well, you. thank you. We, uh, we like having value, so thank you. Thank you, Christine. Any other questions? Um, if there are no questions, I'm going to open it up to the public um, to address the council on this agenda item. former treasurers. City Council and Treasurer. Um, 
I just have a few comments. Um, actually, maybe I've been out of the loop. I'm not sure why this actually came up. Um, I know we had an unfortunate situation before Christine, um, but to me, why is this discussion really here except for that perhaps? Um, I have some comments on the survey and a little bit on the spirit of Capitola and then maybe a little bit about my experiences. So I actually was one of the random people phoned on the survey and my thought when I had the survey, when I was given the question was the depiction of the alternative, in other words, doing investments, you know, engaging with the finance community, making very difficult decisions that would imply you had to be involved in the finance arena for a long time to get that experience, is not what the city of Capitola Treasurer's position is. It, it's just very far from the reality. Um, I appreciate uh, Jamie and the city doing a survey and I guess involving the finance committee of what has happened in California. So I could see cities that have grown significantly and where their finance department gets significantly uh, complicated that you really would need someone that has a very extensive background in finance. But let's take it back locally. Fred Keeley doesn't have that. You know, he wasn't a finance person. Sure, he was involved in legislation and stuff like that, but he wasn't focused on finance. And in fact, I interviewed the person, you know, because I was on the city treasurer. Yeah, I was the city treasurer. So I went down to the treasury department here, city, uh, county, and asked, how is this run? How, how do you deal with all these decisions? It wasn't Fred Keeley. It was the guy that reported to him. So I talked with that person, and I found out how they did our investments and, and how that whole thing operated it was an equivalent person to our finance director. One thing I found out being here, and I'll skip to my experience, is that I was very impressed with our staff here, and I was very impressed with the quality of our finance director. That is the person that makes these decisions. Now getting back to the spirit of Capitola, I was born the same time Capitola was. City of Capitola happened, it was an uh, initiator or whatever you want to call it, the same time I was born. I wasn't around then, but I could tell you I have a pretty good idea what it was like then because the spirit of Capitola right now is embodied in people being in this government, contributing, volunteering, being on committees, and that's part of what the city treasurer's position is. Part of my experience in those four years was people would come up to me and ask me questions. They wanted to know why their money was being spent. They wanted to know, could it be done better? Could it be you know, more efficient? When I went to the city hall every week, I did it every week to go over the treasurer's, uh, excuse me, the check report, there was a lot of times I wouldn't sign that because I didn't get the answers I wanted. But I also like to say is that I got great cooperation, whether it was Steve, whether it was a police chief or was a city uh, manager or whatever. I got explanations and there was respect for that. I think having an appointed city treasurer would abrogate that. We need the city's treasurer to be elected. That person needs to be independent. Thank you. Thank you, John. Kathy Howard. Um, I'm here to say that I think that the city treasurer should be elected also. I think that uh, the finance committee does a wonderful job, but it should be an independent vote to represent the people. We should get that choice, and I think it's just too ingrown for you as a council to appoint that person to be a part of it. And I think there is great communication between the city people who you go ask questions to and respond to you in those kinds of manners that we can have a treasurer elected and still get the same results, but with an independent review of what that is. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Hi. Uh, my name is Mary Jones. Good evening. Um, I am for an election, even if it's only one person, because 
as an appointed person, what's happening is you're taking a closed system and with whatever pressures, whatever needs, four, five, six, or the finance committee have as their focal point, that's what guides the choice. Even if there's only one person running at the cost of, let's say, $5,000 per election, what's happening is you're throwing it out to the whole city and you're getting a much more diverse, sometimes way less educated. I know that there are times on the ballot I'll look, especially judges, and I'll go, I don't know this person. So I actually won't vote. It's like I won't vote for somebody just to mark the box. But I think it's important to protect the process. And there may be one person out there who wants to run, who feels that the skills they're bringing are going to be beneficial to the city, and they may have a personality conflict with some of the people who are looking going, I wouldn't pick that person to save my soul. And the reality is, as we saw with the, with the school board election, you just, you get a lot of, I'll call it kind of that clicky kind of thing going on. Somebody has a voice that's a little different. And it gets people's reactions going. And so I think that we need to protect the right for somebody to run even though they're not considered popular and we need to protect the right for each of us who live in the city of Capitola to say I like that person I'm going to vote for and if they're respected and their position is regarded as important you may or may not find more people running. But I think, as I say, even if it's one person running, the democratic process, it's, it's important. And I think, as Jacques was saying, that the spirit of Capitola, that people be involved. And I think all of us who have sets of friends understand how easy it is to become exclusive. And by saying that something can be elected rather than appointed, it opens it up. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, I'm going to close the microphone, uh, bring it back to the council for discussion and deliberation. Yes. Mr. Mayor, uh, I, I see no groundswell. I see no real clear message from the populace saying that we should have an appointed treasurer. I think we should leave it alone, leave it as it has always been. And I would like to move that um, we not consider the treasurer on the ballot, but that we bring back the general election resolution to the next meeting when we consider the TOT. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Yes, Dennis. Um, if, if we're going that direction, I think that we should do something as a city to encourage more people to run for this office. We, we actually do want the best person out there to do it. And when nobody's running and somebody does it, you, you, don't, you don't have a lot of control what knowledge that or background that person has so I don't know what we can do as a city but there must be something we can do um, we seem to have a good run for city council members now that's a good thing um, hopefully when four is it two years or four years we have the next uh, treasures two years right <laughs> two years okay that we, we find a, a mechanism that that encourages people to get themselves involved in, in government and run for that office so I do believe that I want a person that's very knowledgeable uh, as Christine is and some of the uh, past ones have been, um, to advise us. I need her advice. I need that person's advice. So I want that person to be knowledge of it. Um, I, have no, I have no strong feeling one or the other, whether a person's elected or appointed, but I, I think that they should be the best person for the job, whoever it is. So. Dennis, can I comment on what you just yeah. said? Um, we at the Finance Committee, we often have trouble even filling the position for the Finance Committee. And so I just want to open that up to say, you know, we welcome people um, that are incur or that are would love to be on the finance committee. And like I said, we st we have trouble filling those seats, or you guys have trouble filling those seats. So um, just wanted to make that known. Just in closing, I think we're very fortunate to have Christine as our our city treasurer right now to fill in. That's certainly our. Okay. Um, well, with that, um, yes. I just had just a couple quick Sorry. comments. It's a little bit what Dennis said. 
Uh, you know, I, I, I agree with, but I'm going to vote yes on the motion because I don't think we should put it to a ballot. Uh, I am concerned about public involvement. Um, already for this election coming up in November, we've got six people that want to run for city council, and I'm encouraged by that. I think it's good that people in Capitola want to participate. I'm not encouraged so much by the treasurer because we don't get that participation. The history has shown that we don't get the participation, and that's what worries me. And, and I, and I think we, uh, other cities have recognized that the job title has changed over the years. That's why a lot of cities have switched over to the, to the appointed, because the criteria for the work they've done is a lot more complicated. And although the requirements, as was mentioned, for the city council and the treasurer are the same, you know, we, we, you've heard it mentioned here, then I agree, you know, it's nice to have somebody that has a clue about what, the, what goes on in finance, although it's not a prerequisite. You know, and it, someone can do the job. But my biggest concern is, and, I, and like Christine just said, you know, it, it was hard to get someone just to come up and be on the finance committee. I, I'll acknowledge what Dennis said when Christine filled the, the vacancy that we had. We were very much appreciative of that, and, and she did a fabulous job of doing that. And, uh, but I, I, I don't think that it needs to go to the vote. I, like I said, I'm going I'm to vote uh, not to put it on the ballot, and I hope that someone comes up with some interest to, uh, to be a treasurer. Thanks. Right, and I believe the finance, part of the Finance Committee's recommendation is that they would be more involved <coughs> in doing outreach and <coughs> helping to educate, to helping to maybe dialogue uh, potential candidates for the treasurer position. So I think that that's something that we should certainly pick up on. What would uh, be the optimal situation is if it were somebody that has been on the Finance Committee yes, for a couple years absolutely. that's encouraged to run mm -hmm. for that election. So. Yes. Stephanie, go, go, ahead, go ahead and then I'll, I'll come, just make a couple Well, I wasn't, I wasn't intending to open up the microphone oh, okay. again, but uh, okay. Shock, was there something that... Yeah, um, it seems like the discussion went that way, and I do like Christine's uh, report uh, from the Finance Committee, and, you know, this is a crisis in a way. I mean, it's, it's felt like this needs to be addressed, and so something good's come out of it. I think the involvement of the Finance Advisory Committee in vetting or, you know, getting more people involved is a great one. And I definitely agree with you, Dennis and uh, Ed, that, you know, we need qualified people. Um, we're lucky we have a qualified treasurer right now. So maybe this is going to generate more support for people from the community to actually run. So that's the only thing I want to say. And right. I realize it's closed comment, but <laughs> Thank you. I couldn't resist. Stephanie? Well, yeah. I just wanted to say, I, I think I made all my comments at the last meeting because we were not taped, which is probably good, and we weren't on video, which is probably good because my comments were pretty strong. But the, um, and I still stand by them. The only thing I thought of afterwards is, um, if you can, watch some of the council meetings that I was talking about just so you see what I'm talking about, where I'm coming from because it was an experience that Dennis lived through and Bruce Arthur and Margaret and others. And that's, you know, r real strong feeling about why I really don't want to have a treasurer again. You can have a good one, you can have a bad one. A good one can be great. Bad one can make your life miserable and a whole lot of other people's lives miserable because I lived through it, I watched it. And I know it's not the person, it's the job. <coughs> but watch a couple of those old council meetings oral communications, and staff members should watch them too, so they'll know what I'm talking about. And um, I, don't, I don't know what kind of archives we have, but, but it would be important. Thanks. All right, thank you. I'm going to call for the question then. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, we'll move on to our last item, this item, uh, well, this evening, item 8C, which is to consider a request from Lifestyle Escapes for a special event permit for the Surfer's Path 10K, 5K Run Walk Race in Capitola <coughs> on Sunday, November 9th, 2014. Uh, the recommended action is to consider request and provide direction. Uh, yes, Chief. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Uh, what you have before you is a request for a, a new special event that would be in the city. Uh, just to give you a little background, in February of 2002, the Council approved Resolution 3202 adopting a special event permit program and fee schedule. Uh, this particular event would fall into one of our two categories, which would be a general special event. Uh, as you know, those events that are over 200 people or you have a significant road closure, which we do in this application, it would require council approval. And so I've brought this forward uh, from the uh, Lifestyle Escapes and the owner and director of that program is present 
this evening, Mr. Tom Bradley. I think Tom is back there. He's here to ask uh, or answer questions that you might have in regards to the event specifically. So the proposal is to operate a Surfer's Path 10K, 5K run-walk race. It will start at Portola and 41st Avenue and go down towards the ocean and then make a right-hand turn on uh, Opal Cliffs there and go down into the county and then circle back and it will eventually end in the city of Capitola at Esplanade in San Jose. Uh, they anticipate approximately 1,000 participants. Uh, the race will start at approximately 8 a.m. and will go to about 11 a.m. The anticipation is to have the roads open by 11. The date for this event or proposed event is for Sunday, November 9th. Uh, a couple of highlights about the event. There will be no selling of items at the conclusion of the race. Uh, the applicant is asked to have a, uh, some canopies, some 10 by 10 canopies on the beach and we are recommending or suggesting that they be moved over to the Esplanade Park. And the reason for that is the entrances are usually blocked at that time because of the high waves. And so uh, the encroachment permit for the event is already covered and that would be required for the canopies to be moved into the park. Uh, again, there'll be no selling of items at the conclusion of the event. Uh, organizers have indicated in their application that they plan to donate 10% of the proceed, gross profit to the local sports teams and organizations. Uh, organizers of the event are requesting additional trash receptacles and disposal by our public works department. A couple, couple other items is that there will be a PA system at the finish line. There'll be a pre-recorded music to finish along the way. But there's going to be no live entertainment and no alcohol associated with the event. Uh, the police department will take care of all traffic controls within the city of Capitola. As they come down Cliff Drive, they'll come over Stockton Bridge and then make a right-hand turn. Uh, the organizer will then uh, help move participants along Esplanade Park, or I'm sorry, along the Esplanade towards the park uh, so that we don't have a large gathering right there in front. Now, the event organizer does have experience in operating events. They currently uh, run the Capitol Half Marathon, which has been operating since 2002 in the city. Uh, we've had little to no issues with that event. And so they are familiar with the activities and the requirements, and we do work well with their staff. And so we would, at this point, uh, take direction from the council as to uh, whether you would want this event to occur on the proposed date. Uh, we have sent the staff report to the BIA and the Capitola Village Residents Association. The clerk has uh, forwarded those on. Uh, we have not received any um, a proposal to the event. Uh, they would just like to see that the roads are open at 11 o'clock. Uh, because this is uh, occurring on a Sunday in our off season. There has been concern uh, since there has been some new events that we have taken on and the concern from residents and business folks about event fatigue. And so uh, at this point, uh, we would not make a recommendation other than to ask that you provide direction. And again, the event uh, organizer is here, Mr. Bradley, and he can answer any specific questions about the event that you might have. Thank you, Chief. Uh, council members have questions? Yes, Dennis. Rudy, how, um, you may not have the answers. Maybe Rich should help with this. But uh, how many, how many full-time residents do we really have living in the Central Village anymore? <laughs> I don't know that answer. You can, Rich, you you can, we can look see? it up. It would be yeah. good to know that. Yeah, with some of those. I, I, I feel that the number may be less than we realize that actually live in Central Village. Yeah. And so Thank you, sir. I know that there's... Plenty of property owners down there who own their pro houses down there. But as far as for us full-time residents, I'd like to know how many people really live. I will research that question and get back to you on that. Thank you, Rudy. Yes. Any other questions from council members? Uh, Chief, I did have a question about the um, amplified sound permit. Um, is that for a specified period of time, or will it? Is it effective starting at 8 a.m. till? the event is over. We can add that to the condition that it will not start until 8 a.m. and that it will end up. Well, I, I mean, I, w I would like the amplified sound to not actually start until about 9 a.m. I mean, on Sunday morning, that's one of the biggest complaints I get from residents is about just the volume of noise on their Sunday morning uh, starting uh, so early. 
Um, so I would like to certainly see, and from Mr. Bradley, if there's some way that we could kind of keep the amplified sound down until a decent hour, I mean, maybe 9 o'clock. I mean, can you maybe wait until that time? And maybe if you could address that, that would certainly, um, you know, address one of my uh, major concerns about um, the events that we have in the village. Yes. Hi, good evening. Hi, good evening. Um, so thanks for considering this, um, and thanks for, uh, it's been a good run with the Capitola Half Marathon and the Surfers Path Marathon. We've, we've really had a great event there, and I'm excited about continuing that. So um, with regard to your question, um, the race is a 10K, 5K. So literally, we would have finishers p potentially at about 8.15 if we started the race at 8. Mm -hmm. So without, you know, it would be impossible not to have amplified sound to, you know, they're going to be crossing the finish line. And to give them the same experience every other athlete would get, their name, their kind of the excitement of finishing. Um, I suppose one of the things to consider would be, um, you know, pushing back the timeline. I'm an early starter. You know, we do the half marathon at 7 a.m. to try to get the streets open as early as possible and to try to, you know, kind of impact the community as they wake up on a Sunday morning as, you know, as quickly as possible. And so I proposed 8 o'clock because then we could be done and gone by 11. So really amplified sound is going to need to go with the event itself. And so therefore... If we started the event at 8.30, we would just be kind of pushing the back end of the event. Because mm -hmm. um, I really can't see a way of not having amplified sound but when the people come across the finish line. Right, I, and, and that, I think that's understandable that you want to announce winners and once they've gone to all that effort. But will the amplified sound include the uh, pre-recorded music? Uh, generally, you want to create a festive atmosphere. I mean, we, we do do... You know, I, I do the volume control <laughs> um, when I'm around the venue. I'm in the okay. venue the whole time. We start events down on Beach Street at 7 a.m. And so it's, you know, it's important that that's kept down and the speakers are turned a certain way. So, you know, we do have techniques to help with that. I mean, I turn down the volume and I turn the speakers. I mean, it's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. um, the... Uh, I mean, I just think it's, it, it's something to, to, I guess, discuss, but I mean, I really believe it takes away from the excitement of the event if you don't have some energy associated with the event when people are finishing. Okay, but do, there's the possibility to maybe start it a little bit later, 8.30? Uh, if we do that, then it's going to push the back end. Stand, right. Yeah, and so that's the only consideration. Chief, any problems with the back end? I mean... That was uh, one of the comments made by members from the BIA is they just wanted to make sure the roads were open by 11. Mm -hmm. So, so I would be, I'm just passing on their comments. Right, right. No, okay. Um, yeah, Dennis. Tom, I have a question of you. Um, yeah. I know you work something out with Public Works, but um, you, you, you have a, a thousand participants and every person is accompanied by one person more than likely. So you probably have 2,000 people in the village during mm -hmm. that time. Um, and you're going to, you're actually serving some food to the participants? No, they, when they finish, we're not serving any food. Yeah. It's prepackaged food. So they'll come up to the, to the okay. post-race food area and we'll hand them a, 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 okay. a post-race food bag. Would you consider bringing Save Our Shores in on, with this event with you? Sure. If yeah. they want the exposure yeah, to be well, down there, of it's, course. It's, it's, well, it's, it's good. It's also, they're very good about taking care of trash issues. They're mm -hmm. right in the area, that thing. So if you could bring them in there, it'll help the city staff and... Yeah, that'd be wonderful. I have to say I smiled and grinned a little bit because I'm one of the contributors to Junior Guards. Okay. Um, with the cap, cap, I'm a kind of a major sponsor of, the, of them and with uh -huh. the Capitola Half Marathon. So that's an example of how we give back. So anyways. Um, if you consider but, that. Yeah, bring in other community groups, that's fine. Okay. Of course. You know the, yes, Stephanie. I, I'm concerned about how people are, have you talked to them, have you talked to them all? Uh, no, I, I thought that might be brought up, and I, and I was, should I talk to him before or should I talk to him after? The, the plan on the parking was to really kind of just spread it out. Um, it's difficult to start and finish in, in the village just because of the parking issues. So my, my forethought to that was to, um, you know, move the start, finish in an area where it would just spread the parking out. And permission from them to do it. And um, from the county? Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, so we are, where I'm at with the county is that they don't meet in, um, in July. Um, so the earliest I could get on was August 5th to their agenda. So I meet with Jeff De Los Santos and Lonnie, who are the gatekeepers to the county, and I'm in very good standing with them. And we went over the event and, um, 
and they saw no issues and I was told that it would be on the consent agenda for August 5th. So I'm not anticipating any problems there. But, but where are the runners actually going to meet? On private property, on the sidewalk, in the street? You can you're going to close the street from, from Portola down. So where yeah, are a thousand people going to be? Yeah, the staging area will be between Portola and, um, gosh, the name's escaping me right now, but just past that, that staging area where um, the surf shops are and, and, uh, and the coffee shop and whatnot. Yeah, so we'll, we'll do temporary closure there for the morning for the staging. And so that'll happen between the hours of, say, 6 and 8. And then as soon as the event starts, the streets open up. So, yeah, there'll be a closure there. It just seems a little, little awkward having ha where all these people are going to park and then how they're going to get to the start. And then when they finish in the village, how are they going to get back to their cars? And unless you provide a shuttle to the mall and have an agreement with the mall, that you, they, people can really use their spaces. Well, the idea on the mall was, was that I kind of assumed that they would like the publicity and so that they could be a part of, of, of an event. And, and so I, I haven't had that conversation yet. Um, but uh, in, terms of, in terms of the distances, I measured it, and it's about 0.6 to the start line staging and about... 0.65 from Capitola back, if you walk it. So that's not far. It's, it's a half just, a mile. It just, it's a little, little awkward. It just seems to me that it might be better to have the beginning at a large place like a park where it can accommodate everybody and you're not impacting residents and businesses. And then the finish, the same thing. Uh, well, those businesses are, are closed. And the ones that, are, that would be open, the coffee shop and stuff, are probably going to benefit from the fact that we're, that we're in that region that morning. So um, I think I think that's a more of a benefit than it is uh, from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. for the closure. Um, I guess I'll say this. I've been do producing events for 25 years, and we close streets you know, all the time for, for, for the start of the event, and it's usually a temporary closure. And that do, takes do you notice place. the neighbors ahead, a week ahead of time so they know to move their car? Yeah, so part of, part of all the events is, is the resident notification, and so a business notification or resident notification. Um, so that takes place. You go um, door to door? Yeah. We, for the Capitola Half Marathon, we put out almost 2,000 resident notifications. And you close these door cliffs to, door. to drive to driving? For Pardon two me? Hour? You close these cliffs yeah. to drivers for uh -huh. two hours? Mm -hmm. Yep. It, that's a six hour event. So it comes to Capitola and then it goes back to um, the city of Santa Cruz. So everything, be, well, wharf to wharf, of course, essentially, um, is closed out and back. And then we continue out to the Wild Ranch State Park via the West Cliff Path. So, yeah. I guess I'm just concerned about the neighborhoods and that, that they wouldn't have any, there'd not be you know, a negative impact on, on them. It is the off season, so that's. that's yeah, and I actually, I, you know, I was just kind of following up after my last race and just kind of talking, I talked to Council Member Norton, and I actually was thinking March for this event, and, um, and he suggested, you know, November, you know, that might be a better date in terms of picking an off-season date, and just in passing, and uh, and so I ran with that because I thought I thought that made a lot of sense, and I looked at the running calendar, the greater running calendar, because we want this event to succeed for all of us, right? And so, um, and that actually that date actually works well, so okay. it's a good Did date. Any other questions? So I'm going to ask if any other members of the public would like to address the council on this item. Seeing none, I'll bring it back. Um, I'll move for approval of considered request for life, lifestyle escapes for a special events permit for the Surfers Path 10K, 5K. I'll second. Are, are, are council members familiar with the other event? Have you seen how that works? Yes. And, mm -hmm. and that I'll tell you, the, the half marathon marathon that the same operator puts on is flawless. It's, it's one of the best events we do, actually. And it's so under the radar that we don't even hear about it. Where do you think people are going to park for this? Really well known. You know, I'll tell you, it's not, I think they're going to park in our lower beach parking lot because these are runners and you'd be surprised because of the tightness of the course that they will park in lower, the lower park, they will run to the, fin the start line, they'll run back and they'll get in their car. Uh, I've seen people, you know, park down in Santa Cruz, run the wharf dwarf and then run back. I don't understand it, but I've seen it. Half mile is a normal. A half mile would be a normal warm up for a race right. of this nature. So I agree that the, we're going to see our parking lots being used. And the good thing is they may stay later and uh, mingle in the village longer because they've got parking. So I'd like to stipulate that since the, the finish line is at San Jose and Esplanade, correct? So that's where your your um, amplified music speakers will be. Can you face all the sound towards the beach? Absolutely. Okay, good. <coughs> I'd like to have the back of the speakers 
towards Lawn Way. Yeah. So we have a minimum amount of sound at 8.30. Yep. Right. Thank you. And I'm, I think I seconded that, didn't I? Yes, I, there's the motion and a second. Is, anything further? Yes, Chief. With, with the recommendation, would it be that we put the canopies in Esplanade Park rather than the beach where the application has requested it? Yes. The canopies? You yeah. could ask for that. That was right. a yeah. good. It's, it's a better place. Yeah. Okay. Are we going to have a newsletter that's going to go out by then at all? No. Okay. I was going to put in the newsletter to alert the residents mm -hmm. on Depot Hill about it. And then the applicant is aware that the, uh, the staff fees are offset by the applicant, and that's in the staff report. Right. right. Okay. Hearing anything else, I'm going to call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. That brings us to the adjournment this evening. We'll adjourn this meeting to uh, a special meeting, which is going to be held on uh, Thursday. Uh, a week from today, which I believe is August the 1st, if I... Uh, July 31st. July 31st. Uh, July 31st. Thank you for that. At 5.30. Uh, at 5.30. Uh, and to our next regular meeting, <coughs> which will be on Thursday, August 14th, 2014, 7 p.m. in these City Hall chambers. What time uh, is the special everyone. meeting? Are we Mr. skipping Mayor? the meeting? 5.30. The special meeting is 5.30. No, we're just adding one in between, so we'll have one next two weeks in a row, I think. And we uh, always used to skip the second in August. But yeah, yeah. I, I, there is. Yeah, there is no second meeting in August, right. uh, but there is on August the 14th. Okay. Um, thank so you. with that, thank you, everyone. Good night, Capitola.